bright beauty every student matters hello students my name is sanjay jain in today's lecture we will talk about triangles and then about congruency of triangles right what is congruence or congruency of triangles when we study algebra or arithmetic we say this number is equal to another number right we use equality similarly when two figures geometrical figures are equal in all respects then we say these figures are congruent so equality in other branches of mathematics is known as congruency in the field of geometry right so congruency is nothing but equality equality is denoted by this symbol and for congruency we have got this symbol this equality and then this little symbol on top so this is symbol for congruency now we will study about congruency but let us first of all discuss about triangles a bit this is a triangle let us say right now if i name it a b c this is triangle abc these a b and c are vertices vertices are generally denoted by capital letters right and these are three sides of this triangle and this triangle has got three interior angles right now this angle is also known as angle a okay because this is vertex a so this angle is also angle capital a and this angle capital b and then this sign of angle and this is angle c another name for this angle can be angle c a b when you go from vertex c to vertex b through vertex a then this is the angle angle c a b or in short form you can say angle a other way of writing this angle can be angle b a c angle b a c right so in all these we are talking about the same angle that is this angle and also in this chapter while we progress with this chapter i'll name these angles using certain other alphabets right so i can let us say name it this angle as theta okay this angle as let us say alpha this as beta okay then i will not say this is angle acb i will just say this is angle beta okay so you don't get confused when i say when i uh, name these angles by using certain letters or alphabets right now we also studied in the chapter of lines and angles that the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 right But how did we do that let us say this is a this is b this is c we drew a parallel line to bc passing through a right this line is parallel to line bc now let us say this is angle theta this is angle alpha right if this is angle theta and line bc is parallel to this line then this angle will be theta 2 right why because these two angles are equal as they are alternate interior angles similarly this angle is equal to this angle because they are alternate interior angles hence this angle is alpha now what will be this third angle let us name this third angle as beta tell me these three angles theta beta and alpha are on same side of this line let us say this line is l these are on same side of line l hence make a straight angle which is equal to 180 so i can say theta plus alpha plus beta is equal to 180 right this we have studied earlier also now what is the use of this concept in this chapter for example there are two triangles okay now if i say that this angle is theta this angle is alpha right and i also say that this angle is theta this angle is alpha right these are two different triangles and i tell you that this angle is equal to this angle let us name these vertices 
these vertices also a b c p q and r okay i have told you that theta this angle is also theta this angle is alpha and this angle is alpha now what can you say about third angle okay let us say third angle is beta in this case in triangle abc okay now what can you say about this angle will this angle be beta or something else can it be something else if two angles of two different triangles are equal then the third angle has to be equal why because let us not name it as beta if you want to talk about this angle in terms of alpha and theta what will be this angle this angle will be 180 minus alpha plus theta right because of this property right and what will be this angle this angle will also be 180 minus alpha plus theta so these two angles are equal so whenever i say that two angles of two different triangles are equal then the third angle will automatically be equal right number 1 and then we can talk about categories or class of triangles for example if let us say all sides are equal in a triangle then this triangle is known as equilateral triangle this triangle is known as equilateral triangle when i make this little symbol here little triangle this means i am writing triangle equilateral triangle if any two sides of a triangle are equal then this kind of triangle is known as isosceles triangle if all the sides of a triangle are unequal then this kind of triangle is known as scalene triangle okay then if we have got a right angle in a triangle this is known as right angle triangle right so these are some triangles that we may use in this chapter in equilateral triangle all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal every angle is 60 degree right in isosceles triangle the angles opposite to equal sides are equal so if this angle is theta then this angle will be theta 2 when i am saying this angle is theta this angle will automatically be theta because the sides are equal now this result also we will prove using the concept of congruency of triangles right now when i say the word congruence this is the symbol that i'll use right and i have already told you that congruence in geometry means equality and when do we say that two let us say quadrilaterals one quadrilateral is this second one is this when do i say that these two quadrilaterals are congruent when they are exactly equal to each other what do i mean by that let us say if i pick this quadrilateral and place it on other one it will completely overlap the other quadrilateral every side of this quadrilateral will overlap every side of this quadrilateral right and vice versa if i put this quadrilateral on this one it will completely overlap it okay now what do i mean that if this side is equal to this side this side is equal to this side this side is equal to this side and this fourth side is also equal to this fourth side also these angles are also equal right so every parameter of this quadrilateral is equal to every parameter of the other quadrilateral then these two quadrilaterals are congruent similarly for other figures also you can imagine general figures like let us say you take a coin you take a 10 rupee coin and another 10 rupee coin now this they are identical right so one coin can completely overlap the other one and the other one can completely overlap the previous one so both the coins are equal or congruent in shape right but if you take a 5 rupee coin and 10 rupee coin they will not overlap each other 
so they are not congruent right so these are the examples in general life when we talk about triangles for two triangles to be congruent for two triangles to be congruent all the sides for two triangles to be congruent all three sides of one triangle should be equal to three sides of the other triangle right all three sides should be equal and second one all three angles should be equal right so how many parameters should be equal three sides and three angles so we are look, talking about six parameters or six different things right three sides and three angles these should be equal so if you need to check whether two triangles are congruent you will have to check whether three sides are all the three sides are equal to the uh, three sides of other triangle and all the three angles of one triangle are equal to the all three angles of other triangle now you have to check six parameters but when we study congruence we will shorten this right we will uh, not we will we won't have to check all the six things right we will check only three things now we will study some rules like side angle side congruency criteria then side 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 congruence criteria right angle side angle congruence and right angle triangle in a right angle triangle right angle hypotenuse and one side congruence okay so these these are four congruency criteria these are congruency criteria okay one two three and four so we will talk about these four congruency criteria in detail great details we will also prove these three based on this one now what is side angle side i mean that if two sides and included angle let us say this is p q r this is a b c if two sides let us say p q is equal to a b q r is equal to b c and the included angle what do i mean by included angle angle included between these two sides which i have just mentioned that is this angle in this case i have named it theta and this angle in this case i have named it theta if two sides and included angle are equal then these are congruent triangles third side will also be equal okay so this is a congruency rule right which we will just discuss after this okay so we have to see we have to check six things for two triangles to be congruent if we do not study these rules right now when we study these rules we just have to check three parameters for example in the first case two sides and the included angle you just have to check three things and you can say that these two triangles are congruent why because if these three conditions are met that two sides and an included angle are equal then rest of the angles and rest of the sides will automatically be equal you don't have to check that right so this is the usage of studying these congruency criteria right so the first thing that i should discuss here before going to the congruency criteria is correspondence correspondence what do i mean by correspondence let us say you have got two triangles a b c p q r okay if i say that triangle a b c is congruent to triangle p q r right this is what i am saying this i already know now what i can deduce from this relationship or what i can infer from this relationship is this 
if these two triangles are congruent then all the three sides are equal so i can say ab is equal to pq bc is equal to some other side of this triangle if i say pr then will it be correct that this side bc is equal to this side pr if i say that based on this relationship will it be true it will not be true right because bc is not equal to pr based on this relationship i cannot say it right why because this correspondence i have not taken care of correspondence while commenting this so this is a wrong result right so what is bc what is side bc equal to i have to see the correspondence triangle abc is correspond triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr it means side bc is equal to side qr so side bc is equal to side qr and not pr so you cannot write the results blindly you have to check the correspondence only the corresponding parts corresponding parts of congruent triangles will be equal only the corresponding parts of congruent triangles will be equal you cannot relate bc with you know pr as i did here so this is a wrong result so what is bc equal to depending on this relationship bc is equal to qr right ab is equal to pq so what will be ac equal to ac will be equal to pr so ac is equal to pr and ab we have already discussed is equal to pq right so this is how you check the correspondence and this this statement corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal we will use this in this chapter like cpct we will write it in short form corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal so whenever i compare two uh, parts of two triangles i will just say by cpct right okay so this is about correspondence of sides similarly we can compare the angles also so if triangle let us say i write this statement again triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr what can i say about the angles what will be angle a equal to angle a is this one if this is theta where will i have theta in this triangle if angle a is theta angle p will also be theta so this angle will be equal to this angle here okay you cannot just by looking at these figures say that this angle is equal to this angle no right you have to take care of the corresponding parts of congruent triangles so angle a corresponds to angle p here depending on this relationship angle b will be equal to angle q so this angle if this angle is alpha then this angle will be alpha and you know that if two angles are equal then the third angle will also be equal so if this is beta this angle will be beta and you can verify this using the correspondence angle c angle r angle c here and angle r right so you have to really really take care of the correspondence now if i ask some of the students let us say i got this triangle here and this triangle here right this is a little bigger so let me try and make two congruent triangles which are of same shape and same size let us say this is abc and this is this is r q p okay and triangle abc is congruent to triangle q r p let us say this is what i have given okay and one more thing i am giving you that this angle is theta this angle is alpha and this angle is beta now tell me the question is this much information i have given you already okay now the question is which angle out of these three 
is theta okay you will look at this vertex a then look at this vertex look at this vertex in this relationship here this vertex a corresponds to vertex q in this triangle right so if i say that this angle is theta then this angle will be theta in this triangle now which angle will be equal to alpha in this triangle look at the vertex this is vertex b this corresponds to r in this triangle so if this is alpha then this angle will be alpha okay now third angle you don't have to think about it you can directly write that this angle is beta because if two angles of two triangles are equal then the third angle have to be equal otherwise look at the correspondence this is vertex c and this is angle beta so vertex c will correspond with vertex p here so this angle is angle beta right i hope you will take care of the corresponding while solving the questions okay so now the most important thing side angle side congruence rule In introduction to Euclid's geometry, we discussed that there are some results, there are some results in the universe that are taken as obvious universal truths or we call them axioms, right? And they do not require any kind of proof. They are accepted as it is. And based on those axioms, you can prove other theorems and other results, right? So these are obvious universal truths or axioms similar in this case side angle side congruence criteria or congruence rule is also an axiom you don't require the proof of it but you can understand this let us say you have got two sides and an included angle when i say included angle i mean when i mention these two sides this angle will be included angle included angle between them right now if i have got another triangle or another set of sides let us say these are sides a b and a c these are sides p q and p r right if i say that side a b is equal to side p q side a c is equal to side p r and this angle angle a is equal to angle p let us name these if this angle is theta this angle is theta this much information is given to you right the two sides and the included angle of two there are two sets of this information right now if i pick this set and put it on this one if i put point a on point p point b on point q and vertex or point c on point r this will completely overlap pqr there is no reason why it won't overlap it you can uh, use the common sense and see that ab will completely overlap pq ac will completely overlap pr because the angle between them is same if this angle was different then it would it would not have overlapped it right now if I draw this side BC, it will definitely be equal to side QR because of this gap. This gap is same in both the cases because the included angle is same and these side lengths are same, right? So if I say the two sides and, an inclu and the included angle are equal, then these two triangles are congruent because the third side will definitely be equal, right? and this is accepted as truth obvious universal truth and this is an axiom you, it doesn't require any kind of proof okay but you can obviously do an activity in your classroom and then see that if you take two sides and an included angle equal and place it on the other one you will see that the third side will have to be equal okay so this is side angle side congruence rule that if 
that two triangles are congruent if two sides and included angle of one triangle are equal to two sides and included angle of the other triangle. So, two triangles are congruent if two sides and included angle of one triangle are equal to two sides and included angle of the other triangle. Okay, This I just showed you through an activity that these will be congruent. Okay, That this side will definitely be equal to this side if AB is equal to PQ, AC is equal to PR and this angle is equal to this angle here. Okay, So, this will be our axiom and we will prove rest of the results or rest of the theorems based on this criteria, SAS criteria. In short form, I will say it SAS congruency criterion. Okay, right. In figure, OA is equal to OB, OD is equal to OC, which means OA is equal to OB and OD is equal to OC. Okay, then we need to show that triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC, right. So, for first one, what is given is given that AO is equal to OB, AO is equal to OB and OD is equal to OC, OD is equal to OC, right. These two things are given. Now, look at this angle here and this angle. What are these angles? These angles are vertically opposite angles. So, I can say that angle COB is equal to angle AOD, right? These two angles are equal, correct? Now, see, we have just studied that if two sides and included angle are equal in two triangles, then we will say these two triangles are congruent to each other. Now, in this triangle, two sides and included angle are equal. Hence, we can say triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC, right? Why only triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC and not COB? Because AO is equal to BO, AO is equal to BO, OD is equal to OC, OD is equal to OC and angle COB is equal to angle AOD which is angle O right in both the triangles. So, O is in the middle and O is in the middle in this triangle also. So, I have taken care of the correspondence while writing this result. You cannot blindly write any two triangles let, let us say BCO is congruent to triangle let us say you say ODA right you cannot blindly comment like this because if you comment like this then BC will be equal to OD which in this case is not true right because BC is this side and this will be equal to AD and not OD right so you cannot blindly write this you have to take care or you have to keep in mind the correspondence while writing this result here. So, taking care of the correspondence, we can say that using, using SAS congruence rule, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. Now, look at this one. AD is parallel to BC. If triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC, then the corresponding parts of 
congruent triangles are equal. So, we can say that angle BCO is equal to angle ADO. Why? B, B, C, O, A, D, O. Okay. So, what do I mean by it is that triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC. If I need to talk about angles, if I say ADO, I have picked this, then this, and then this. Right. So, on this side, I will have to pick first B, then C, and then this one. So, angle ADO will be equal to angle BCO using the CPCT rule. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. So, if ADO is equal to BCO, that means this angle, if this angle is alpha, then this angle will also be alpha. And what kind of angles are these? These are alternate interior angles. If alternate interior angles are equal, then we can say so alternate interior angles are equal hence AD is parallel to BC ok so we will use these results and prove various questions given in this chapter right and you have to take care, really, really take care about the correspondence of different parts of two triangles. Otherwise, it is very, very probable that we will find the wrong result. Now, in this question, AB is a line segment and line L is its perpendicular bisector. What is a perpendicular bisector? Which is, let us say this is side AB and this is perpendicular bisector. So, it will bisect it and it will be perpendicular to it. Okay, so which means line L is perpendicular bisector of AB that this angle is 90 degrees and AC is equal to CB. This much is given. If a point P lies on line L, okay, so this is point P, show that P is equidistant from A and B. So to prove or to show PA is equal to PB. This is what we need to show that point P is equidistant from this point and this point. Right? Hence, we should prove that PA is equal to PB. Now, look at what is given. What is given information? Given is that AC is equal to CB. Why? Because L is perpendicular bisector of AB. Also, angle ACP is equal to angle BCP because both are 90 degrees. If this angle is 90, then this will also be 90 degrees, right? Okay. And now see, look at this side. This side appears in both these triangles, this triangle and this triangle. So, side PC is equal to side PC because it is common to both the triangles, right. Now, what is given information or what I can derive out of these three information is that two sides are equal in triangles, this triangle and this triangle and an included angle is equal, right. So, this side is equal to this side this side is equal to itself and angle included is 90 degrees. So, using side angle side congruence rule, I can say that triangle ACP is congruent to. Now, you should stop. Why? Because you have to see the correspondence before commenting. You cannot blindly write anything PCB or BCP or BPC. No. You have to see which part is corresponding to which part in this triangle. So, side AC 
should be equal to side BC or CB, right? And side PC should be equal to side PC, okay? So, if I write, let us say BCP, triangle ACP is congruent to triangle BCP. Now, look at this. Side AC is equal to side BC, which is true. Side PC is equal to side PC, which is also true. Now look at the included angle. Angle ACP, angle ACP is equal to angle BCP. So yes, this is also met. Hence, this correspondence is correct. I can say triangle ACP is congruent to triangle BCP. Right? So this much we know by now. Now look at this. What will be side AP equal to? This is side AP. What will be side AP equal to? It will be equal to side BP by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. Right? So, I have shown you the correspondence. So, these are corresponding parts of two congruent triangles. Hence, they have to be equal. So, AP is equal to BP which is what we had to prove, right? Hence, prove that the point P is equidistant from point A and point B, right? Another way of looking at the correspondence can be, when you have seen that these two triangles are congruent, then you can look at the angles. Now, in this triangle, this is angle 90 degrees and in this triangle, this is angle 90 degrees. So, the side opposite to angle 90 degrees in this triangle will be equal to side opposite to 90 degrees in this triangle. Angles will also tell you the corresponding parts. For example, if there are two triangles and angles are given, theta, alpha, beta and this is another triangle which is congruent to this one and this is theta, this is alpha, this is beta. Okay, let's name these triangles A, B, C, P, N, M. Okay, now I have given you that these two triangles are congruent. I have not given you the correspond co correspondence, right? I am not telling you A, B, C is congruent to which triangle? M, N, P, P, M, P, N, M or NMT. I have not told you, right? But what I have told you is that if this angle is theta and this angle is theta, this angle is alpha, this angle is alpha, this angle is beta, this angle is beta. And I have told you that these two triangles are congruent. Now give me the correspondence. So if this angle is theta, opposite side of theta in this triangle, that is side BC, will be equal to side PM because side PM is opposite to angle theta in this triangle. In this triangle, side opposite to angle alpha is AC. So, it will be equal to side NM. Look at third angle beta. So, what is the side opposite to angle beta? In this triangle, it is AB and in this triangle, it is PN. So, these sides will be equal, okay? And looking at these sides, you can search for the correspondence. Let us say triangle ABC will be congruent to. Now, look at this AB, PN, BC, PM, okay? So, this B corresponds to now look at this, in both these PN and PM, there is P and in these there is B. So P will be in the middle corresponding to B, right? Now look at this, AB is equal to PN, so I will write N here. Now at first two places there is AB, at first two places there is PN. So this is satisfied. Now if I, I have to write the third alphabet here, so N, P, M. Now look, BC should be equal to PM and BC is equal to PM here, right? And look at the third relation. AC should be equal to NM. What is AC? This one is AC 
and it is equal to nm so yes we have written the right correspondence triangle abc is congruent to triangle npm okay otherwise you can go by angles also triangle abc is corresponding to is congruent to look at abc means theta alpha beta right so theta alpha beta means we have to go theta to alpha alpha to beta so n p m triangle n p m right these are the two ways you can check for the correspondence by looking at the equal sides or by looking at the equal angles right theorem angle side angle congruence rule two triangles are congruent if two angles and the included side of one triangle are equal to two angles and the included side of the other triangle what it means is let us say these are two triangles if this side is equal to this side this side is equal to this side what it means is let us say these are two triangles if this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle and this included side this side is included between these two angles is equal to included side in this triangle this much information is enough for us to say that these two triangles are congruent to each other two angles and the included side now the beauty of this theorem is i have already discussed that if two angles in a triangle are equal to two angles in other triangle then this third angle will automatically be equal to the third angle of this one now look at this if i say two angles are equal then if i say two angles are equal when i am talking about two different triangles right or i am saying all angles are equal how are these two statements different these are not when i say two angles of two triangles are equal then i mean that all the angles of these two triangles are equal right so if all the angles are equal and one side is equal right then this criteria will satisfy what i mean is if i say angle angle side criteria it is same as this one you don't have to study about this separately right because if two angles are equal the third angle will definitely be equal if angle angle side means any two angles are equal to any two angles of the other one and one side any one side is equal to one side of the other triangle then these two triangles will be congruent so first of all let us study about angle side angle congruence rule if i name these triangles let us make them separately let us say this is a this is b this is c p q r and angle b is given equal to angle q angle c is given equal to angle r and included side bc is equal to side qr so side bc is also given equal to side qr now we need to show that triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr because this is how i have taken the correspondence now this much is given information and we need to show this now how do we show this because we already know the sas congruency rule that two sides and included angle if two sides and included angle 
of two triangles are equal then these two triangles are congruent this this much we already know now look at this this angle is given equal to this one let us name these if this is theta this is theta this is alpha this is alpha okay otherwise you should look at these marks i have marked it by drawing one little arc here and one here and here i have drawn two little arcs right just to show that these two are equal okay so now this much information is given now what can i say about side ab and side pq what can i say about that there can be three things that can happen ab can be equal to pq second thing thing that can happen is ab may be greater than pq and third thing ab may be lesser than pq right when this information is given these three things may happen right we will see what which is which one is the correct thing out of these which will happen right but right now we assume that these are three cases that may happen ab may be equal to pq the first case or ab may be greater than pq ab may be lesser than pq can you think about any other thing any other relation between ab and pq no right out of these three one has to satisfy so let us talk about them one by one if ab is equal to pq right if ab is equal to pq now see we are already having this information here that angle b is equal to angle q right angle b is equal to angle q this is given and we all also know that side bc is equal to side qr this also we know now if you carefully notice it this is equal to this this is equal to this side and included angles are equal so using side angle side congruency rule we can say that triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr right if this side ab is equal to side pq then it fits the rule that we have already studied side angle side congruency rule right so it was very easy the case one if there is any other case let us say ab is greater than pq in the second case what we are considering is this was a b c this was p q r and these two angles are equal these two angles are equal and this side is equal to this side this much information is given right now we are considering second case where a b is greater than p q we are considering all the possibilities right we have considered that if a b is equal to p q then it fits the sas congruence rule and we can directly say that this triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr and if there is any other situation let us say ab is greater than pq if ab is greater than pq we can always take a point on ab so that let us say this is a dash now a dash b is equal to pq ab is greater than pq so if i take a point on ab such that ba dash is equal to pq i have taken a point here right so if i join this point with point c now look at this ba dash i have constructed in such a way that it is equal to pq okay by construction you can say or by assumption you can say because if ab is greater than pq then there has to be a point on ab so that that point let us say is a dash b a dash is equal to pq right now i know that angle b is equal to angle q 
this is given also I know that BC is equal to side QR this is also given now what can you say about these two triangles triangle A dash BC A dash BC and triangle PQR side A dash B is equal to side PQ included angle B is equal to included angle Q because side BC was equal to side QR and this angle B is included between A dash B and BC similarly angle Q is included between PQ and QR so triangle A dash B is congruent to triangle PQR right so what I can say about angle C and angle R here angle A dash C B is equal to angle P R Q right that is this angle is equal to this angle here angle R this complete angle right but I already know that I already know but I know that angle ACB is equal to angle PRQ right this was given information so using these two equalities what I can say that angle A dash CB is equal to angle ACB by comparing this and this relation now look at these two angles angle A dash CB that is this angle is equal to ACB that is this angle can these angles ever be equal they can only be equal if this point A dash coincides with point A hence I can say A dash coincides with point A and if A dash coincides with point A then by using SAS congruence rule we can say that these two triangle triangle ABC and triangle PQR are congruent right so the first case that we made was AB is equal to PQ the second case we considered that let us say AB is greater than PQ but finally we arrived at a conclusion that no it cannot be greater than PQ because this point has to overlap with this point to satisfy the given conditions we have shown it here right so in this case also AB is equal to PQ okay and using SAS criteria we can say these two triangles are congruent in the third case when we are considering that AB is lesser than PQ the third case you can also prove by contradiction this kind of contradiction that in that case also side angle side congruency criteria will be valid and this cannot be the case okay in that case also you can show that this cannot happen if this set of information is given then this cannot happen because finally you will show that AB is equal to PQ if you take any point let us say you say that PQ is AB is lesser than PQ then you will extend AB and make it equal to PQ now take this point as A double dash let us say you will join this and using this similar logic that we used in case 2 you can show that this point A double dash coincides with point A so this third case also cannot happen AB cannot be less than PQ if this set of information is given hence we can say that if two angles and an included side are equal to two angles and an included side of other triangle then these two triangles are congruent to each other and this rule is known as angle side angle congruence rule in other words you can say angle angle side congruence rule any two angles mean the third angle will also be equal and any one side because out of the three angles this side will be included between two angles right definitely be included in two angles and similarly in the other triangle also I hope I have cleared it enough for you to understand this theorem if you still don't understand what you do is you practice it yourself you try to make it on paper 
and then you will see that this rule is also equivalent to this rule okay these are not two different rules now we will attempt some questions in the next lecture so that whatever we have studied in this lecture we can practice it right so based on whatever we have learned today you should practice and do it yourself on the notebook before going to the next lecture then we will proceed to the next lecture where we will where we will attempt some questions based on this knowledge and solve those questions very very easily right this chapter is very very easy if you can practice these theorems or these axioms on your notebook yourself right so once you understand these concepts the questions are very easy right we have studied that side angle side congruency criteria and angle side angle congruency criteria right what is side angle side two sides of a triangle and included angle and two sides of another triangle and included angle if these are equal then these two triangles are congruent and also based on this axiom of side angle side congruency rule we proved that if two angles and included side of one triangle is equal to two angles and included side of the second triangle we will say that these two triangles are congruent to each other okay so now let us look at this question here line segment ab is parallel to another line segment cd so this is parallel to this and o is the midpoint of ad so this ad is a straight line right this is a straight line and o is midpoint so od is equal to oa show that triangle aob is congruent to triangle doc so we are looking at this triangle and this triangle here now see what is the set of information that we are given that ab is parallel to cd right this is given based on this we can say ab is parallel to cd and this line da is transversal for these two lines right this is a transversal so this angle will be equal to this angle what i mean is that this angle if this is theta then this will also be theta why because these are alternate interior angles so angle c d o is equal to angle b a o alternate interior angles right okay this is what we know now another angle that we can talk about is this one this angle is equal to this angle why because these are vertically opposite angles so if this is alpha this will also be alpha so angle c o d is equal to angle b o a vertically opposite angles now you notice this angle this angle is equal to this angle and this angle right and included side od in this triangle is equal to included side oa in this triangle so angle side angle congruency criteria says that these two triangles are congruent right now you need to take care of the correspondence so i know theta theta here alpha alpha here and third angle will naturally be equal to the third angle in this triangle so look at the correspondence like this theta alpha and then this angle so doc triangle doc is congruent to now theta alpha and this angle is congruent to triangle aob right triangle aob is congruent to triangle doc yes so we will say hence it is proved that triangle doc is congruent to triangle aob using angle side angle congruency criteria right look at the second part of this question o is also the midpoint of bc now when i say 
the triangle DOC is congruent to triangle AOB, then corresponding parts of congruent triangles will be equal. Hence, I can say that CO will be equal to OB. So, OC is equal to OB, right? Hence, O is the midpoint. O B C right so O is the midpoint of side B C right 